If you take a look at my channel, you'll see that I've made a bunch of videos about Streamlabs OBS to the point where I thought, that's it. You know everything. I have nothing else to teach you about Streamlabs OBS. But turns out I wasn't paying attention. There's a pretty good amount of options that I never got to use myself or that I just didn't know about. And the cool thing is that most of those options are exclusive to Streamlabs OBS. No other broadcasting software allows you to do all of that. So I decided it's time. Today, we're going to go over all those options, activate them for me and show you how it's done in the process. Those are a bunch of features that you didn't know about Streamlabs OBS, which is the sponsor of this video. So let's get started. So here we are in Streamlabs OBS, and this is my normal setup for when I stream. I imagine that everyone knows that you can record video with Streamlabs OBS. It's not just a broadcast. If you go at the bottom right here, you will see the record button. But in case you didn't know that, let me show you real quick where you set it up. You go to settings, that's bottom left or wherever you can find the cogwheel. You go to output. And depending on your output mode, I like to keep it simple. You will find, if you scroll down, the recording options. The advantage with the simple output mode is that it basically copies whatever you have set up for your stream. So your bitrate right here and your video output, this will apply to your recording. But if you want it to be different, you can switch it by going to advanced. All right, so what's so special about recording in Streamlabs OBS as opposed to another broadcasting software? Uh, first of all, they have something called selective recording for video. On top of your source list, you will see the little icon here that you can just toggle on and from there basically you can switch which source you want to display in your recording for example when i stream i have my labels bar here i have the top cheerer of the day and i have my chat usually i have my chat uh, my chat is right there. So depending on the video that I'm recording, I may not want to have any of that. So what I would do is identify those sources, go find them, for example, chat box here and hover here. And by hovering over that icon, it will tell you what it represents. Right now it's visible on both stream and recording. If I click once, now it's only visible on stream. So if I press record right now, it will not show up on my recording. Let me type uh, more messages. And let's click record. Boom. Hi, my name is Gal Level, and this is a test recording of selective recording. Click record again to stop it. Boom. And I can go find the file. It's right there. Let me bring that up. As you can see, my chat is not visible, even though it's right there. But everything else is visible. So that's something to use if you're playing a game and your alerts keep going off and you have a lot of screen clutter and you just want your gameplay footage so you can edit them later on. Now you might be wondering, okay, but when am I really recording? If I'm live streaming at the same time, I don't really do that. I rely on clips, for example. Well, I'm glad you asked because we're going to set up a replay buffer, which is basically instant live replay, which you can also save. So create your own clips with the sources that you want with the press of a button or multiple you set up the shortcut so let's go to settings and let's go to output and all the way at the bottom we'll see replay buffer and here you can enable replay buffer you can set how many seconds that mean how many seconds you want the replay like to go back basically uh, 20 seconds is pretty uh, nice now let's go back to general and under output here you can make it so that it automatically starts the replay buffer when you're streaming so when you press the button to save the clip if you will save the replay it will also play it in a source if you watch streamers like dr disrespect for example he usually does that some action happens he presses a button and then the replay shows up in a corner or something like that so let's turn that on another interesting option here is keep replay buffer active when stream stops <laughs> So if you're playing a game even off stream, you can use this to actually record your clips. I'm gonna turn that on too. Now you can click done and let's go to my game scene. I'm not playing a game right now, so I'm probably gonna just play a video of a game. All right, so in my game scene, this is basically what it would look like if I were to play Apex, for example. Now in order to manage the replay, we need to add it as a source. So on top of my source list, first of all, I'm gonna turn this off because I'm not gonna use selective recording for now. We're gonna click plus and we're gonna find replay or instant replay. It's at the bottom of widgets. Click it, add source, add source. And it's funny because you can decide to loop it if you want, <laughs> but don't do that. Uh, click done. Okay, so it's right here, but you can't see it because we haven't used the replay option yet. I told you that it was one button. Let's set that up. And we can do this by going to options. Again, the cogwheel, going to hotkeys. And if you just want to save the replay, uh, whether you're streaming or not, you will have a save replay right there. And you can set up any button that you want on your keyboard to save the replay. And there's actually a crucial step that I forgot to do is uh, in between record and go live, there is the start replay buffer option. So click it, 
and now it's ready to save the replay. So we have our shortcut, which is Control Alt Q in order to save it. Let's see if just saving it will show it automatically. So Control Alt Q and there it is the past 20 seconds. So it appears here and I can place it wherever I want. For example, I can be like, OK, this is this is where it is and this is where it happens. That's pretty nice. I think that's pretty cool. So let's test it again. Um, so for the next 20 seconds, it's going to have the replay buffer. So I'm going to press Control Alt Q and see what's going on. And there it is. That's so cool. So here I had to turn on replay buffer, but that's because we're not live. If I were to go live, it would turn on automatically. So there's no way you're going to forget to turn it on since it turns on automatically when you're live. Again, I'm only using the save functionality, having the instant replay on here. Uh, but of course, if you want to add more shortcuts to turn it off, to mute it, unmute it, you can do all that in the hotkeys. So save replay is here. But if I go to my game scene and I find instant replay right there, so you can show it, hide it, uh, push to instant replay, push to hide instant replay, just to show instant replay was before. And if you scroll all the way down underneath sources, there's even more options about uh, muting, unmuting, push to mute, push, push to talk, restart and all of that. So one thing to note here that I just tested it, it's that it records everything that you see, basically, of course, according to the selective stream going on. But if you switch scenes, you can still press it and it will record whatever happens to that scene that you switch to. So that's the part where you ask me, OK, why don't I just use clips? For example, if I'm not if I don't care about the selective recording, I can just use clips. It's better, it's easier, plus other people can help me. There's an extra thing that you can actually do with everything you save from your replay buffer. Not only it's saved automatically somewhere on your hard drive, but also there is something called the highlighter on Streamlabs OBS. And it is right here and it's free. It's not for Prime members or, or well, Prime members can use it, but it's not just for Prime members. So if we go here and we click highlighter, it automatically loads up every replay that we saved. And the highlighter is actually a full video editing tool that you can use to make compilations or just shorten the clips so that they're ready to post on social media, social media or content platforms such as YouTube or YouTube Shorts. The thing is, if you stream on YouTube, you probably have your Streamlabs OBS already linked to YouTube. You can directly upload them. A little cool thing here is that it reminds you what your shortcut is in order to save your replays. And there's a little tutorial if you want to know how it actually works. There's a video tutorial showing you everything, but it's basically going to go through uh, the replay buffer again and then bring you back to the highlighter and tell you how it works. But you can also readjust your replay buffer options from here. Uh, replay duration, you can adjust that. We had it at 20 seconds, remember? And then our shortcut and it will tell you you can capture a replay, which it loads up automatically. But you can also import clips from your computer. So if you have an intro or an outro and get this, even music for the background, you can import that too. All right. Of course, if you want to import a clip, for example, let's say you downloaded your clips from your Twitch already and you would like to put them in. Uh, they're all compatible. Basically, it's mostly MP4, MOV, MKV, all compatible. And then from there, you'll see the check mark where you can select which clip you want. If you want to trim the clips and this is like the this is the cool thing. If you want to trim the clip, you can just click here. Watch the clip. For example, I wanted to show up when I switch the scene. I can just trim it about here even more you can see it automatically replays there you go and then it does that little smile okay perfect uh, click away if you hover over the clips also you can see the whole clip right boom so preview is it works super well as you can see at least on my computer it's working really really well let's trim this one too Let's trim that one, too, so we don't have a super huge clip. Boom. On the right side, you can see all the transitions <laughs> that you can have. I don't I'm not a huge fan of transitions, but let's try this one. 90s game. That sounds cool. Uh, transition duration. We can make that less than a second. K.6 background music. Let's let's keep that out of it. But if we turn it on, this is where you would import a music file and then music volume, all of that. And then you can preview it.
actually like that transition. What? <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. So it tells you here, the render preview shows a low quality preview of the final rendered video. So you just see a low quality just to show you real quick what it looks like um, when it's almost finished. And when you're done, you just click export. And then from there, you name it, you choose a location, 720p, 1080p, even though this was recorded, so it upscales it if you need to. You can even go with 60 FPS. This is mostly important, for example, if your intro or outro is 60 FPS or you mix match, you have that possibility. File size, faster export, balance, smaller file. Since we're recording a tutorial, let's go with faster export, but I would love to have more details on what each of those do really to the file. Maybe an advanced option for people who want to know more about the encoding process. Let's click export. And I totally forgot where I located the file. <laughs> and there it is. Oh, well, it doesn't matter if I forgot because the cool thing here is that it gives me the option to open the file location. Now, if I had my YouTube connected, I would be able to upload it directly to YouTube. Let's click open file location. And there it is. You can double click it. And as you can see, the quality remains decent. Knowing that it was 720p originally because of my output scale, if your settings are 1080p, it will look better, of course. Yeah, that looks good. I like the transition. I like that transition, especially the fast. Okay, so that's pretty dope. Uh, also, if you want to reorder them because it's kind of like chronological, uh, you can just drag and drop them. It's that easy. And again, if you have an intro or outro video, just add a clip here and import it. <laughs> I'm getting, <laughs> I just got to follow while I'm trying to record. <laughs> now, there are other options with Streamlabs OBS, like multi-track recording. That means that you can record, for example, a podcast where you can have each track on a separate file. So if your guest is super low, you can go in post-production and adjust the levels, for example. But I don't want this video to be too, too long. I want it to mostly focus on the replay buffer, the selective recording, and also the highlighter. I might actually make another video on the highlighter just to show you a concrete example of how you can use it after a stream to create like a quick social media video to advertise your stream or to show people, hey, this is what you missed and boom, it's a like cool little highlight. So that was a couple of options in Streamlabs OBS that I now have activated and ready to go. I really love the fact that if someone doesn't have something like shadow play to record their clips, that you basically have an instant replay tool that saves your video even when you're not streaming. So if you're just having fun with friends on Discord or whatever, you now have a way to record 20 seconds in the past or more if you want to. And if you don't do video editing, you now have a way to quickly edit your clips together in order to post on social media. Uh, something that I'm hoping to see in the highlighter, maybe like different formats, 720p, 1080p is the formats that we stream at. But if we're going to export them, for example, for YouTube shorts or even TikTok or Instagram reels, it would be cool to have the portrait mode. I know that Streamlabs also does a cross clip, which is a software that is, well, not a software, a service that is dedicated to create Creating those portrait videos. Maybe there's going to be a fusion soon. Either way, I'm excited. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. If you watch my video about scheduling your content and how your clips can basically be used as the core advertisement for your stream, this goes into play really well. This creates a certain workflow that I feel like you're not going to have in other broadcasting softwares. Either way, thank you so much to Streamlabs uh, for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out.